Hey everyone, it's time for another live look at the astrology. My name is Katie Sweetman and this is Empowering Astrology. So thank you for joining me again for another live look. Um, I'm here in Brooklyn, New York. So every week we get together and we look at the astrology and something that I say over and over again is that the astrology is 50%. You are the other 50%. So how do you work with this energy? This comes up so often in my work and even just talking to people about astrology because sometimes I think half my job is just education, just educating people about what astrology really is. And it's energy simply energy. It's archetypical energy. It's energy that colors our lives. And we either live it consciously, we live it unconsciously, we live it instinctually, or we live it in a way that helps us to make better decisions or understand ourselves better, or to heal, to let go of the past. So I see some familiar faces in the audience. Thank you for joining me again and again. And you know, some of you are my clients. Um, and uh, let me know where you're watching from because you know, like I can't travel this sad rising gal can't really travel that much. Um, so I have to travel through you. Um, again, my name is Katie Sweetman. I'm here in Brooklyn, New York, and I'm an astrologer and psychic medium. So yes, we kind of come together week after week. And so that said, let's look at the astrology. So this week, I didn't even say what week it was, it's April 12th through 18th, 2021, which is probably a really important thing to mention. But at this point, we're in the middle of April. But we're coming to the end of Aries season. And Aries season is the first sign of the zodiac. It's the first season of the astrological year. It's a time when we connect to these energies of renewal and new beginnings and fresh starts. And this this is why uh, like culturally, it's not a religious statement, but culturally we have like the images of spring and chicks and eggs and fertility and renewal. And these are old pagan customs. And we know that this is the time when we celebrate the renewal of life after winter. You know, I say people on the Scorpio, I'm part of the, the zodiac where things are dying and decaying, because in the wheel of life, there has to be a place for death. But in the wheel of life, there has to be a place for life. And that's what happens when we get to Aries season. It's that spark of life again. And I hope that you all are celebrating the spark of life. And even though astrology is very northern hemisphere biased, I know some of you are in Australia, but you can still, you know, you're still living through those energies and connecting through those energies, even if it's on paper, a different season for you all down, down under. So Aries season, and we just had this Aries new moon yesterday. We had an Aries new moon at 22 degrees, and it was it was on Sunday for most of us here in the United States, but for those a little bit further afield, it was on Monday, April 12th. And so this is a time to really start something new. What are your intentions? Not just for this coming month, but this coming astrological year. This takes us all the way into March, April, of 2022. Is it a project? Is it a healthy initiative? Maybe you want to quit, you know, something that you normally do. Maybe you want to make a job change or a career change. Where is this energy showing up in your life? Maybe it's something as simple as cleaning out closets, you know, getting organized, getting um, ready for the coming weeks and months. And then but this energy, it needs a direction. And, you know, this week, you know, we do start things off, you know, the moon was in Aries, you know, at the beginning of Monday of April, of April 12th, but it's since gone into Taurus. So we sort of have this carryover from Aries energy into Taurus energy. And I think I was writing this, I can't remember if this is an update that I wrote today or for a future update. But in astrology, the you know, Aries, Aries is a fire sign. So the, the first element that we encounter on the astrological wheel is fire. Fire initiates, it gives life to things. But what do you do with that fire energy? So fire comes before earth. Earth element is the second element in the astrological wheel, Taurus. Taurus is the second sign, the second it's the first earth sign. So you need to take this raw Aries energy and give it a form. 
put it into something, uh, do something, create something, structure something, organize something, plan something, bring that earth energy in. It doesn't have to be Taurus energy. Taurus energy is about gathering resources. It's about like the things that are tangible and that we can touch. But the second earth sign is Virgo. Virgo is the planning and organizational part of the creative cycle. It says, okay, this goes here. This is what I want. This is what I don't want. This is how I perfect things. And then we get to Capricorn. Capricorn is the last earth sign and the creative cycle. And it talks about how do we construct and build for the future. So I sort of, you know, I'm talking about these maybe a little bit more esoteric points. These are the things we don't normally talk about, but these are important esoteric points. So we understand how does energy work? How do we create things? How, how is this all just like right there in our faces in the astrology and the zodiac wheel and how the elements are organized. So if you're feeling like really restless this week, because you want to do something, you want to go someplace, uh, you want to start something I'm like, okay, great. Well, what are you going to do with it? What what's the how do you keep these creative creative energies flowing? That said, you know, and this is something that I wrote about in my update for the Aries new moon. And you can um, I put the link in the show notes. It's my f- new moon report on Aries. And even in the, the update I did last week, last Monday, you can find out what um, the Aries new moon meant for your sun sign or your rising sign. But the point that I made in my uh, new moon report is that this new moon was square Pluto. So there's a little bit of an interesting dynamic that's unfolding this week, because as we get into Friday, April 16th, we will have sun square Pluto. So you know, I've been talking about Aries and new beginnings and moving forward, and maybe there's something that we really want to move forward with. But the square to Pluto, and Pluto is in Capricorn, Capricorn is an Earth sign, says that in order to move forward, we have to face something. Face ourselves, face our inner saboteur, face our shadow, face our shadow that sometimes comes up as other people because Pluto has this energy that can almost show up like an avatar. Um, the boss that's really toxic or the parent or this or that. And it's This person is an avatar of an energy that gets us to transform something. So this is saying that with this energy of the new moon, in order to move forward, we have to transform something. We have to face something. We have to look within. We also have to maybe break from the past in some way. You know, Capricorn is the densest energy of the Zodiac. It's ruled by Saturn. You know, I was talking earlier about Earth element and the creative cycle. When you get to Capricorn, it's manifested. It's built. It's solid. It's like it's not just the raw you know, the the ideas of Aries and, and Gemini and the raw materials of Taurus has now been built. So there's a way, in a way, rather, we are deconstructing this week. We are seeing the, the structures that we have built, or maybe that were built for us, maybe the negative structures that were built for us. And we are hopefully taking action, Aries, to break them down, to transform them, to transmute them. These could be old structures, old emotional structures, old psychic structures, ancestral structures, things that are preventing us from taking that next big step forward in this astrological year. You know, with that energy building all week, be aware of how is Pluto showing up for you? Are you feeling emotions coming to the surface? Are you wondering why you're angry? Because Pluto does this thing where it sort of takes the stuff that are repressed and buried and it makes them unrepressed and unburied. There's sort of like Pluto is the, the volcano, so to speak. And I know actually there's some volcanic av- activity happening in the world right now. Um, so where, where are the things being on Earth for you? And this is in a weird way, it's like treasure. It's the, this sort of the inner darkness that we then turn into light because we transmuted. We, we, we realize what, what has been there the whole time. And so this could be a very powerful week for us. But just to sort of sit with it, be aware with it. Uh, how are you seeing your own Pluto, your own shadow, your own saboteur show up? And maybe these deeper repressed emotions, repressed feelings that cannot be held back anymore. Aries. Now, there's two sides to every 
zodiac sign. You know, Aries is bravery and courage and action and new starts. And the other side is, is anger. It's frustration. It can lash out. So maybe you're feeling impatient. And you're like, why am I feeling impatient this, you know, this, this week? Because, you know, where does that stem from? Is it, is it legitimate? Is it coming from something in the past? Are you impatient because you realize that something happened to you in fourth grade? I, I don't know. This is all for our work. And this is how we take the astrology, 50%, and really start to shift and uh, work with our half. Because that, that makes it so that we have a very different experience than if it's just this unconscious experience with the astrology. I was asked by a client who is perhaps watching about the upcoming full moon that's on April 26. This full moon has a, is getting a little bit of a reputation um, by other astrologers. It's not an easy full moon. And it activates a story, a story that we'll talk about in a few moments. But this is why over and over again, I talk about different points in time, because we have to be aware of how the thread keeps coming back, the plot keeps coming back and how full moon even with its energies of uranus and this and that and it's confrontational maybe it's an awakening for some people maybe it's a breakthrough for other people and this is why you can't look at a you know, at the look at the energies and even if the energies are quote unquote bad and and do just a straight bad read because I've seen people do amazing things with terrible astrology. I've seen people do terrible things with amazing astrology. So it really depends on us to some degree. There are some things that are out of our, our control, of course. So this week, like I said, these energies are building, but we have a lot of support. You know, this this week doesn't have a lot of big aspects, but it's like we have you know intense energies. But we also have support. We have support. We have a sun sextile Mars on Tuesday, April 13th. We have sun sextile Jupiter on Thursday, April 15th. Sextiles are generally very quiet energy. They're not worth mentioning most times, but I think it's good to point them out because they, they can make things easy, like easier. They can, they're the energy of Venus. And the energy of Venus just likes to smooth things over. It says, it's like, okay, here, let me help you. I'll hold the door. I'll make that call for you. I'll, you know, it's like the little chocolate on your pillow before you go to sleep at the hotel. It's like this little nice touches that kind of make you like, oh, thanks, Venus. Thanks, sex tiles. So maybe as we go through this Pluto energy this week, it's like, oh, look, there's a silver lining or somebody's helping me or somebody's holding my hand or I have the faith you know, sun sextile Jupiter, I have the optimism and the wherewithal to get to the other side of this. But the main point I want to make this week is Venus goes, speaking of Venus, Venus goes into Taurus on April 14th. I'm mentioning this for a couple of reasons. Normally Venus going into Taurus, I mean, personally, I like Venus going into Taurus. Venus comes home to Taurus. Taurus is about fertility. It's like I said, it's that's the first earth sign. It's fertility, it's raw resources and material. It's money, it's uh, you know roof over our head, it's the food in the kitchen, it's pleasure. So Taurus is a sign that really talks about the pleasure and comfort of earthly living. Who wouldn't like that? Um, but Venus going to Taurus means that it's also activating a story. Yes, stories. That's why, you know, Sag Rising, love telling stories. So go back to March, March, May 2018, March 2019. These are just things for you to always sort of have in the back of your head because these were the two months that Uranus went into Taurus for the first time since 1930s and 1940s. You and I were not alive. Maybe maybe somebody out there is, is, was alive, but the idea is that this is a big deal. It takes Uranus 84 years to go through each of the zodiac signs. Uranus is part of this class of planets. These are what are called outer planets, modern planets. They, Uranus was discovered in 1781, I believe. And these are planets, Uranus, Neptune, Pluto, and even the ones that have been, been discovered in the last 15, 20 years, these are planets that were discovered through a telescope or through mathematical 
mathematical prediction. They are outside the classical boundaries of astrology. Now, if we were talking, you know, old, you know, before 1781, yes, Facebook Live, 1780, um, there were no planets beyond Saturn because that was the last planet that we could see. So Saturn symbolically represents a boundary. It's a very, you know, everything before Saturn is very real world. Everything beyond Saturn, now we're in a different, now we're in a different space. So Uranus is the first modern planet, and even Neptune and Pluto, it's worth saying, these are planets whose jobs are to get us to evolve and to transform. They do it collectively. You can just look back if you know your history, things got a little interesting in 1780s, 1790s, um, and even you know Neptune's discovery in 1860, no, 1846, um, and Pluto in 1930, 1931. So these are archetypes, these are energies that we all pr collectively and personally work with to have growth, evolution, transformation, and the opening of our consciousness. So Uranus gets us to grow and transform by any means possible. Neptune does the same. Pluto does the same. They just all do it in different ways. Ne or, sorry, Uranus's job is to get us to transform, but to get us to transform by shaking us awake. It's, it's the planet of revolutions. It's a planet of awakenings. It turns on the light. Um, it's the energy of Prometheus. If you want to read a huge astrology book, read Cosmos and Psyche by Rick Tarnas. Um, he really talks about uh, these archetypical cycles with the uh, planets, and he says Uranus is like Prometheus. And what does Prometheus do in the mist? Turns on a light. So Uranus went into Taurus, going back to May 2018, March 2019. And that was, those were the two months that Uranus was like, hi, hello, Taurus, hello, sign of money, sign of stability, fertility, pleasure, the body. And Uranus said, I'm here to turn everything upside down. Now, you may be thinking, well, Katie, I'm not a Taurus, but you have Taurus somewhere in your astrology chart. Taurus somewhere in your astrology house. It's some room that has been seeing a lot of reinvention and transformation. And if you are a Taurus, if you are a Leo, if you are a Scorpio, if you are an Aquarius, these four signs that form a cross, you are really feeling these big and powerful shifts since 2018, 2019. Uranus goes in May of 2018, goes out November 2018, goes back into Aries, goes back in March of 2019. Because Uranus says to each and every one of us, it's time for you to be you. It's time for you to know your value and your worth, to know exactly what the value of money and currency is worth. You know, we certainly have cultural value on things, we have implied value or intrinsic value on things, but what is the true value of things? And I think that 2020 and everything that went on in 2020 really shook up our values. You know, what we needed was so suddenly everything was was shook and different and you know here in Brooklyn you couldn't get flour like that's it's nuts so for Taurus is food Taurus uh, also connects us to these kind of energies of the supply chain and like how we get things and the money and the value and things so there's a part of your life where there's been some sort of seismic shift even in the past two three years story that I tell people is that I have a 20 year background in IT and graphic design. Guess what I did in March of 2019 and not because I did the astrology and was like, this is going to be the day. It just happened. I left my job to do astrology full time because Uranus said to me in 2018, what are you doing? This is not what you came here on the planet to do. You came here to sit in front of absolute strangers, Mondays, 6 p.m. Eastern, um, and talk about astrology. So here we are, two years later. Um, so Venus going into Taurus on April 14th activates, like, like so it gives strength to the story. And then if we go down the line to that April 26th full moon in Scorpio, opposite Uranus, it's another sort of step in the story. So let's just quickly refresh you all on what um, what's what's going on in this part of your Taurus life, your, your the Taurus part of your chart. So Aries, 
Taurus is your money sign. It talks about value, security, roof over your head, this sort of sense of like, how do you earn a living? And if you are an Aries or an Aries rising, maybe you've seen a lot of shifts in your material life, your income, um, sort of what you own, what you possess, um, those sort of these more um, abstract ideas around stability and security, um, you've seen a lot of shifts in the last two years because Uranus is trying to wake you up. Because if, I'm just saying this to, to make a point, if you got lazy, meaning you're like, oh yeah, this is always going to be here, and you don't take it for, for, its, for you take it for granted, and you don't really know its value, then Uranus is like, here, I'm going to teach you about value. Or if you're trying to earn a living in a way that's just not a match for you or your soul, then Uranus is like, here, let me help. So this is going to show up differently for everybody. But the idea is that by 2025, 2026, this part of your life will look radically different. And you if you're thinking, Oh, my God, I'm an Aries, this is my money. What does that mean? I don't know, maybe you're just completely cryptocurrency by 2025, 2026. Or maybe you use this energy to really get your money story transformed. Maybe you grew up with a story around money because mom and dad or their mom and dad or because somebody told you you weren't worth anything and you were like, you know what? No, I'm not going to do this anymore. This is not who I am. This is not how I want to live. And maybe this this is very inspiring. So this doesn't have to be a bad thing. Um, so like I said, everybody's going to see this a little differently. So this is a point for everybody. Really understand like what is your Uranus and Taurus story? Because you're going to have to go back. May, you know, roughly May 2018, roughly March 2019, because there will be points throughout the coming next five years or next four years, um, and even the past few years where we we see the thread over and over and over again. Taurus, Taurus, you you are changing, so you go back to the person you were at the start of 2018, and I would. I wouldn't bet money and I wouldn't bet my life, but I would pretty much bet that something about your life looks radically different. And the idea is maybe you look radically different. Maybe there has been a complete 180 or a total shift in awakening. Here's the sort of the silly analogy that I use. Like imagine you have spent your whole life thinking that you are a triangle or whatever shape, whatever color. And Uranus walks in as like, what are you what are you doing? This is you're not a triangle. You're a circle. You're a rhombus. I don't I don't know, but you're not this. And so this is an energy for Taurus where there is a coming out, there is an awakening, there is a need to become who you really are and to sort of strip away the fears or the, the cultural programming or the ancestral programming that have made you think that you are something that you're not. And this includes trauma because trauma is very insidious. Trauma makes us think we are our trauma, but that's not who we really are. So the idea is that you are transforming, but you are transforming into you. The you that was always there, but maybe you were afraid to be. Gemini. So this is happening a little bit behind the scenes. Uh, Taurus is what's called your 12th sign. The 12th sign talks more about your spirituality, your, uh, your blind spots, your unconscious, your dreams, your intuition, your need to pull back from the world and retreat. It talks about your connection to the divine. So maybe when you go back and you look the past two years, three years, I guess, almost at this point, you see that there's been some sort of shift in your deeper life. Maybe, I don't know, maybe your dreams are trying to wake you up, but you're like, nope, this, I'm not going to pay attention to these weird dreams. I keep happy. I keep having. Um, or maybe you're like, wait, I, I am spiritual, or maybe I am a lot more intuitive than I thought I ever was. And the idea is that over the next five years, there is some sort of radical internal shift. It could be that you become much more spiritual, or you learn to rely upon your uh, intuition more. Or it could mean that um, you have to get rediscover that internal GPS, that spiritual GPS that maybe you got 
cut off from. So this is like a little bit more of a subtle or maybe, I don't know, it's Uranus. Maybe it's not so subtle. Like I said, Uranus is just trying to get you out of your own way by any means possible. So just pay attention to the dreams that you're having right now, or at least later this week or later this month. Pay attention to the intuitions, the flashes, the insights. Um, you know, just a little side note, whatever comes, just make sure you're really grounded and embodied who you are. And I say this because sometimes we get flashes of things and they're not based in reality. Um, but we have to really know who we are. We have to be completely grounded in ourselves so that we can discern what is really spirit and what is maybe our internal voice or our fears or our emotions. Um, what's after jump? Uh, da, 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 cancer. So cancer, uh, this, sorry, it's like went almost to the full moon. I got blinked for a second. So cancer, this energy of Taurus is happening in your sign of friends and community. So maybe you go back and you look over the past couple of years and your social circle is radically different. Maybe people have come into your life because it's, it's an important point to make. You know, I know maybe you all are kind of jumping through the signs, but this is for everybody. Um, people will come into our life and they will be like Uranus, meaning they will wake us up. They will somehow be the catalyst. They will embody the energy. They will be the avatar, just like you know, I said that you know, Pluto, we have Pluto avatars in our lives. We have Uranus avatars in our lives. So maybe you met somebody, a friend, uh, somebody in your social circle, somebody in your community, or you got involved in a group over the past couple of years, or maybe you're on the verge of this. Maybe it hasn't quite happened. And that connection has radically opened your eyes, has radically transformed you, and you do not see yourself, you do not see the world, you do not see the people around you in the same way. Maybe you had a best friend and then going into 2018, 2019, there was a big breakup because the, the connection was incompatible anymore because I think Uranus on some level always threads back to identity. And you know, we forge friendships based on sometimes people who we really aren't. And we get to these points where there's a break in a friendship and even you know, a romantic relationship too. Um, and it has to break because there's no, how do you compromise? You know, it's almost like there has to be a, a new, it has to break so there can be a new connection again. But also, Cancer. Uh, Uranus is trying to open up the way you see the world, open up your dreams, open up your vision, and maybe even inspire you to get more involved with things on a humanitarian, collective, um, social level. Leo. So I've been talking about this for a while, Leo. You are in the midst of a, in total, seven-year story of reinventing your professional life. There is something about your professional life that is going to look radically different um, by 2020, 2025, 2026 than it did in 2018. Maybe you're th thinking, well, duh, the pandemic completely shut down my industry or this or that. I think at the heart of this, it's, it's two things for Leo. One, either you are in a professional trajectory or a place in the world that is not your place. This is not your trajectory. And the example that I often give, imagine you have spent your whole life, you, you became a lawyer because mom and dad were lawyers, their mom and dad were lawyers. And you get to 30s and maybe even your early 40s when you have the Uranus opposition and you suddenly realize I'm halfway through my life and I've been living somebody else's life. So now I need my my direction, I need my professional uh, title to match who I really am. This is why you see people make major uh, 180s with the energy of Uranus, especially in the early to mid 40s when you have these what are called classic midlife transits. So Leo, something about your professional life is changing. It could mean, like I said in that first example, because you're not doing you in the world, you're doing somebody else in the world and maybe you know life you know Uranus keeps helping helping air quotes and trying to get you to be you I'm not a Leo I have a major planet in Leo and so what Uranus was like you're not an IT person you're supposed to be doing this here let me help 
and then I mean, well, whole backstory. So the other way that this could manifest for you, Leo, is maybe you're like, no, no, this, this is my job. This is my career. This is my passion. Leo needs passion, but you're only doing it 20% or 5%. And Uranus is like, what are you doing? You, you have all this talent. You have all this passion. You have all this, this voice. You want to do something in the world. Why are you only doing it 5% or 20%? Um, and so this is when you have these experiences where somebody has a breakthrough. They've been chugging along, doing their professional life, and maybe holding back or having fears. But then there is this moment where suddenly they do them at 100%. And this is when people suddenly become famous or suddenly become recognized or get thrusted into the public light. Um, but this is a time for, for Leo in general to find their voice and to whatever they're doing um, on a professional level um, to really make sure it's them. Um, and sometimes we really keep, I'm saying this because I was talking to Leo this weekend um, and he's, you know, he's a, he worked in Broadway, worked in theater and, and you may or may not know this, like Broadway's been shut down for a whole year and he still has the passion, but I think he's still trying to fit it into a shape don't worry, he's not watching. He's still trying to fit this into a shape that doesn't fit. I think it fits maybe something else. And, and, I, and I think he realized that it's not me trying to force anything. But I'm like, look, Uranus is in your career sector for the next four years. Make the most out of it. Um, Virgo. So Virgo, this is happening in the part of your chart that talks about how you view the world. Now, if we were talking a few moments ago about Leo and how this is about your professional life and about the world, but this is like, what do you believe in, Virgo? You know, what is, what's your worldview? What, what's your faith? What's your truth? What's your meaning? And Virgo can get very, sorry, Virgo. It's like, I have to be able to touch it. I have to be able to, to touch it in order to know that it's real. But you have Uranus up in the part of your chart that's talking about, okay, well, what do you believe in? Do you have to touch it? Is it real? Um, and it's really trying to awaken you and open your eyes. So go back, Virgo, and think about how you expressed yourself or saw the world or what were your beliefs and convictions up until 2018. And how has that changed? You know, maybe you were doing you, Virgo, in a certain way up until 2018. And you're just like, you know what? Like, I don't have to do this anymore. I don't have to believe in this. This is not my truth. Well, okay, Virgo, what is your truth? So this is a time when you have to explore. You have to search. Maybe you went back to school. Maybe you are going back to school. Maybe you are talking to other people and, and learning all the things that you can learn because the idea is that. 2025 2026 that you see yourself you see the world radically different and maybe the the, the the ideas and concepts that you would never have imagined coming into your life you know at the start of 2018 um, are hugely impactful and shapeful upon your life as you go into the middle of this decade so it's a big time, Virgo, even though this is happening in the part of the chart that's more about the mind, it's more about your vision, um, your education, your wisdom, your knowledge. These are all the things that, you know, your sort of your knowledge of the world has to open now. You can't, the thing with Virgo being, not Virgo, the thing with Taurus being in this part of the, the chart for you, Virgo, is that you can get very uh, in, your, in your ruts about what you think and what you believe. And Uranus is just trying to, Turn it all upside down. Um, Libra. So this is the part of the chart that talks about your deepest emotions, your um, your psyche, your fears, your your ability to trust, to feel safe, to be intimate, to open yourself up to somebody. So Uranus has basically walked into a room in your astrology house and sees all these boxes, these emotional boxes that you've been holding on to. And Uranus is like, what are you doing? Why are you holding on to this stuff? This is this is terrible. This is this is holding you back. Here, let me help. And then suddenly you realize that all this stuff that has been nicely tucked away, never to be dealt with again, suddenly just spills open like a pipe burst. 
So this is a time where I'm seeing this with Libra clients or Libra rising clients. A lot of deep and powerful emotions are coming up. Things that maybe they didn't want to deal with. And then Uranus is like, nope, we are going to deal with this. This is necessary for your evolution here. Let me let me help. So maybe you're unpacking this within this say an astrologer me or more importantly do it with a you know healthcare professional but you are really shining a light prometheus on the darkest parts of yourself right now and understanding what makes you tick what is deep in your psyche what is deep in that inner saboteur that is sort of getting in the way of things so it's these are emotional shakes maybe these are emotional shocks you know maybe for some people um, there have been some experiences in the last two years for Libra or Libra rising that have been really confrontational and it's in those experiences that you really start to see the threads of past trauma or coping mechanisms or disassociation and you're sort of like oh look at these patterns that I didn't even know were there. Here, let me dismantle them. Because that's just what Uranus wants you to do. Uranus, and this is for everybody, Uranus just wants you to be free. Free from yourself, free from limitations, um, and it's trying to get you again out of your way by any means possible. Uh, Scorpio. So when I was saying earlier, I was kind of going through the signs, I said the signs that are feeling this the most are Taurus, Leo, Scorpio, Aquarius. Why? Because for Scorpio, the, Taurus is exactly opposite. So this is about relationships. Uranus has come into your life and said, okay, I'm here to shake up how you connect to people. Now, Scorpio in general is a sign that is a bit guarded. It's a sign that sort of has everybody at an arm's length because you know it's ruled by Mars, it's very emotional, it's very strategic, but Uranus is like, nope, we're, we're not doing that anymore. So all the heavy guard and all the heavy boundaries that Scorpio instinctually puts up are being really tested right now. So Scorpio, go back and look over the last two years and maybe people have come into your life, romantic partners, non-romantic partners, who have awaken you, who have shook you up. Maybe you were single and then suddenly this relationship out of nowhere came in. I have seen this with a lot of Scorpio, Scorpio rising clients. They have this story about relationships and dating and suddenly they have somebody who's completely the opposite. And they don't know, like, can I trust this? Is this real? Is this person not trying to, you know, out to get me or whatever? So who, if you're a Scorpio, who's the Uranus in your life right now? Who came in in 2018, 2019 that is very different than everybody else? Who is trying to shake up and transform your boundaries, your guard? Um, maybe, you know, you're in a new romantic partnership. Maybe you're not anymore. And that's the other thing about Uranus is that Uranus, you could be in a 30-year marriage and be miserable or be in a relationship where it's, you, there, it, it had an expiration date and Uranus can kind of come in and say, okay, now it's time for you to evolve, but that this evolution is going to happen because something's going to shift in your connection with your intimate partner. Um, sometimes this is where events happen that come out of the blue. I'm not trying to freak you out, Scorpio. And I know, Scorpio, you just want to know all the things that could possibly happen so you can strategize. Or, Scorpio, you know, you were in a marriage, you were in a long committed partnership, and you needed to get out. And here comes Uranus, and Uranus is like, we, I need you to get out of this. It's not, it's not working. So that's when, you know, maybe if, you know, for those Scorpios for whom this is relevant, you're not in that relationship anymore. There's been a separation, there's been a divorce. But this is to clear space for somebody else or something else to come in or for you to awaken to relationships in a very different way. Because don't forget, Uranus will be there until 2025, 2026. The story is still unfolding. And if Scorpio, you're like, well, this hasn't happened yet. I'm like, get ready. It's going to happen at some point. So Sagittarius, 
this whole story about Uranus is happening in how you take care of your body, how you kind of show up in your day to day life, how you organize things, health, wellness. So Uranus is trying to shake things up in the physical department. Maybe you started doing some, some sort of physical activity or some sort of um, exercise over the last couple of years that's radically different. Maybe you are awakening to the needs and the wants of your body. Yes, your body has needs and wants. Like, no, it's super annoying. But yes, your body is the first relationship that you that you had. It's not mom, it's your body. And a lot of us are completely outside of it. We're completely disconnected from our body. And, and we're like, well, I'm like, what is, what does your body want? You know, crickets my body wants something yes your body wants something so maybe this uranus energy is awakening you to this wonderful relationship or the possibility of a wonderful relationship with your physical being and it's not something where you're just always in your head anymore you're like oh i'm actually going to come fully into my being now and maybe this requires a complete radical overhaul of your day-to-day -day life maybe you are organizing it differently you're doing the um you know, like I said, doing physical exercise or eating differently changes to, to diet because your body is like, actually, I don't want to eat that anymore. It's not good for me. I don't feel good with this. So maybe you've seen some big dietary changes in the past couple of years. Anything that's been going on in the health department is really just to awaken you to this intrinsic, inseparable relationship that you have with your body. As long as you're here, on this planet, you need your body. You need your body to live, obviously, to get around, even more obviously, but what is not so obvious is that you need your body to transmute your karma, to work and to evolve and to become more consciousness, become more conscious. You cannot do that by floating around in the ethers as a spirit. So maybe that's the radical awakening for you. Like, oh my God, like I need this. I need this body. I need it. It's the most perfect body I need for my time on this planet and this life. And that's, that's the revolution. Um, Capricorn. So Capricorn, um, this is what's called your fifth sign. So in a way, this talks about you. It talks about personality. It talks about identity and how you express who you are. You are in the midst of a total awakening. Yes, as Pluto, Pluto is in Capricorn. It's been in Capricorn for the last 10 years, 10, 13 years. Uh, Pluto has been stripping you down for the better part of a decade. Well, when you strip everything down. Remember I said Capricorn um, is the most dense sign of the zodiac because it's ruled by Saturn. It's manifestation. Well, when you strip everything back, what do you find? What do you discover? So you are in this long period that takes you to the middle of this decade of really discovering who you are. And the thing is, is that most people don't know who they are. Who they are is so lived through the filter of family, culture, the past, trauma, societal expectations. That's not who you are. Who you are is the energy that lives inside of you. It is. It has a, a feeling. It has a flavor. It has a. It has a, a sense to it. And this is why when we pass, that energy is not here anymore. We we feel it. It cannot be replicated or reproduced. It's what makes you different than all 8 billion people on this planet. So maybe when you go back over the last couple of years, you see some sort of awakening of self. Maybe the person you thought you were at the start of 2018 is not the person you're realizing who you are. I have some Capricorns in my life and it's like, who am I? If I'm not this, then who am I? It's a deeply existential question. Um, it's a little scary. I mean, as a Scorpio, I'm like, no, nah, yeah, you're fine. You just keep going. You can do this. Um, but it's a time when there's something about the self, identity, creative expression, um, even children, because part of the chart does talk about children, it will be radically different over the next three, four years, if not already. Aquarius. 
This is the bottom of your chart. Taurus forms the base and the foundation of your astrology house. And so maybe you've moved in the past couple of years. Maybe you've made a radical move. Now, this could be a physical move, of course. I know a lot of Aquarians, Aquarius risings that have moved across country, uh, made some really big shifts. They've, they've left home. Maybe they were living very close to their family, and now they're someplace radically different. Maybe they had to leave their family because the family was toxic or not supportive, and there just came a point where the, the best way to move forward was to separate from the family energy in order to build new family because Uranus wants us to be free it wants us to be authentic and it needs the people that are in our life even if they are our blood relatives or the people who are like family to be absolutely 100% supportive and nurturing of who we really are to a similar point maybe you're not physically moving but it's a psychic move where you were psychically planted so to speak at the start of 28 is not where you are psychically planted now i had this transit a few years ago and i was expecting big calamity and then i bought furniture because the most radical thing i could do at the time was to buy furniture was to put down roots was to say yes to life instead of having this like nomad anxiety like oh i can't buy furniture because what if i have to move so i just say this to kind of give a little funny uh aside of how this energy can manifest but aquarius you know where's home who is home and maybe that question how you are answering it now is very different than how you would have answered it three years ago but the idea is that by 2025 2026 you know exactly where home is and who home is and it might be someplace thousands of miles or light years away from where you were three years ago pisces so pisces this is happening in the part of the chart that talks about voice communication um pisces you are trying to find your voice and maybe how you spoke or how you communicated or how you listened and learned in 2018 is not what is happening now i mean i think that pisces you are a sign that is very intuitive um you feel a lot and maybe you don't always know the value of what you have to say so how do you awaken your voice? How do you get heard? Um, maybe you are using your voice in radically different ways than you did before. This includes singing, writing, public speaking, but this also talks about patterns of communication because it is Taurus. Taurus talks about these things that are tangible, even if they are intangible, these sort of patterns around speech and, um, and education. And maybe you are awakening your relationship with your mind. Maybe suddenly you are voracious in your appetite for learning. Uranus is like, yeah, actually, you are a lot smarter than you thought you were. Or here, let's let's learn a lot of different things. Let's go back to school. Let's take classes. Let's go to workshops. And let's really get that mind moving. Uranus could be genius-like energy because it switches on a light and it helps us to perceive things that are different than how you would normally perceive things. It helps us to connect the dots. And so maybe you're connecting the dots right now, Pisces, in a way that is very different than the way you would have seen things a few years ago. Now, Pisces, this part of the chart, it's not um, strongly manifesting in a way that it is for other signs. It's not to say that you aren't experiencing a radical shift but i think for you it's really important to uh, pay attention to how you're using your voice and how your relationship with your voice and how you use your voice has shifted the past few years this could be something as simple as you started to do video podcasting or you started you started a a podcast or a, uh, or started doing videos because suddenly you have not supposed you know, the part of this, the evolution of you finding your voice is you putting your voice out there. And how do you like really find the power? Because I think there's a lot of power and strength with um, with Taurus energy. And Taurus does talk about assets. And so really understanding that your voice, your mind, how you communicate, how you listen, and how you learn is also an asset. So 
thank you all for going around the zodiac with me. Um, you know, listen for a friend, listen for uh, an intimate partner, listen for somebody else that's in your life, because maybe you're going to understand a little bit more differently what is happening and why for some people this energy can be very volatile. For some people, this energy is really powerfully transformative and liberating and it's an awakening it really depends and this is why astrology is 50 percent you are the other 50 percent so how do you awaken to what you can do with this energy how you can live it how you can express it and to work on yourself to liberate yourself from the past and the things that are keeping you back so that is the look, that is a look at the astrology of April 12th through 18th, 2021. Quick little housekeeping. Next week's broadcast, I'm visiting family. I'm going to, well, not probably, likely uh, record something and either post it on Facebook, post it on YouTube. I just haven't figured out what I'm doing yet, but don't worry. If it's not a Facebook Live, there will still be a video. So... Anyway, that's just a little quick housekeeping. Um, again, my name is Katie Sweetman. I work under the name Empowering Astrology. You can follow me online at empoweringastrology.com. You can follow me on Facebook if you don't already. Instagram, um, for those who are watching the replay on IGTV, thank you very much, or even listening on Spotify. Um, book a consultation with me. I know some of you are my clients and I enjoy connecting with you every week. Um, but thank you all for sharing yourself and sharing your lives with me. And till next week, bye.